Welcome back. Drum brake replacement can be intimidating compared to disc brake jobs because there's a lot more hardware in a drum brake and you need to make sure you put them in the correct location or else you can have some serious braking issues. I'm going to do my best to explain how to install every part piece by piece. I will run into issues which you will see throughout the video, but do not worry. I have the patience of a Jack Russell, so if I can do this job, so can you. Let's jump right in. First thing you need to do is jack up the vehicle. Make sure you place wheel chocks under the front wheels if you were just jacking up the rear. I'm currently replacing all the brake lines in my truck so I have the whole truck lifted in the air. Once you have safely jacked up your vehicle, remove the wheel and then place it out of the way. Chris Fix always says to put the wheel under your vehicle for additional safety. I agree, so that's what I'm going to do. Now you need to remove the drum. If the drum is stuck, hit the drum on the outside to break loose that old rust. I do not recommend hitting the face of the drum as you could accidentally hit the wheel studs and damage them. After hitting it a few times, try to remove the drum. If needed, spray some penetrating fluid around all five studs and in the back of the drum too. There's a little rubber piece in the back that you can remove and spray inside to help loosen the drum from the hub. Repeat as needed until the drum comes off. Now let's clean things up a bit. Grab an old container and place it under the brake assembly. Then start spraying everything down with brake clean. I like to spray more than I normally would since I'm replacing everything. Once that dries, you will start wondering, how the heck am I gonna remember where everything goes? That's actually the easy part. Take your phone out and snap a couple pictures. You want one from the top, one from the bottom, and one from the front like this. This should give you all the angles you need to refer back to when installing the new hardware. I'm also going to be using this diagram. This lists out all the parts, so if you hear me mention a certain piece of hardware, this is what I'm referencing. You can screenshot this image if you want to follow along easily. But wait, there is another way. You can also grab an online repair manual like this from emanualonline.com. These repair manuals are like Hanes manuals times 50. I love using Hanes manuals, but check this out real quick. If you go to the top left of the screen and click on these three dots and lines over here, this will bring up your menu. Now click on group six, brake system. Then open up section 0602, brakes, rear drum and then scroll down to the removal and installation pages. Here's everything you need to know about drum brakes for your vehicle. It's that simple. This repair manual has just about everything you need to do any job on your car. If you are interested in one of these manuals, just go to their website and use code TSG20 for 20% off their whole store. Now let's start removing parts. I'm gonna start up top and work my way down. I have this special tool to help. If you need one, I have it linked down below. In order to get the shoe return springs off, you need to use this end of the tool. There's a little lip on this end which will pop the spring right off as you can see right here. Now do the same thing for the other shoe return spring and then you can remove the springs. If you can't remove them right away, don't worry. The more things you remove, the looser everything else gets and those parts will just fall off. Let's move on to the shoe hold down springs and pins. There's one on each side and I found the easiest way to get them off was with a pair of pliers. It's hard to see from right here because of my poor camera work, but you will see on the other one how I got it off. Grab the outer ring of the cup and with the other hand place a finger on the back of the pin. You want to do this to prevent the pin from spinning. Now with your pliers, push in and turn. This should detach the pin from the cup and release the assembly. Don't get discouraged as this will probably take a few tries, but it will eventually come off as you can see right here. Don't forget to remove both pins, and now that step is complete. At this point, start moving the brake shoes around and you should be able to loosen the rest of the hardware. Here I am removing the adjusting cable. Then I remove the other shoe return spring as well as the cable guide. Now there are two pieces of metal you need to retain. One of them is this little guy. This is called the shoe guide plate. So make sure you don't lose that. The other part is actually attached to the end of the parking brake link around the small spring. Or as was the case in my truck, it was stuck in this little spot on the brake shoe. Those two parts need to be reused as the kit I bought did not come with new ones. Now remove the parking brake link and then take off both of the brake shoes. You may have other parts fall out of the bottom, kind of like my adjuster assembly right here. If your adjuster level spring is still attached like mine, go ahead and remove it. 
At this point, one shoe should be free and the other shoe will be attached to the parking brake cable. Let's free that other shoe. You need to find a way to remove that pivot washer. This is also referred to as a C-clip. I took a pair of pliers and kept peeling away parts of the ends of the pivot washer. This took me a few minutes to complete, but eventually it broke free. Now you just need to separate the cable from the shoe and you are ready to move on. If you were replacing a wheel cylinder, now is the time to do it. Since everything has been removed, you have full access to it. Just remember to bleed your brakes afterwards. Moving on, let's get everything back together. Before we do, we need to clean things up a bit. There are six spots you need to clean up. These spots are called shoe support pads or shoe contact surfaces. As you may have guessed already, this is where the shoe comes in contact with the backing plate. You have to clean this area as best as you can. Just take some brake clean like I am right here and use a wire brush to get off that old brake dust and grease. Once you have used a wire brush on each shoe contact surface, spray the whole backing plate one more time to remove as much brake dust as you can and allow it to dry. Later you will be adding anti-seize to those shoe contact surfaces, but not yet. You will find out why shortly. Now we need to replace the dust cover. This is very simple to remove. Just push it out with anything. I'm using pliers. Getting the new one in is not as easy, but still not difficult. The easiest way I found to get the cover seated properly was to get one end first and then work the other end with either your fingers or something else. I use those pliers again, but anything will work, such as a screwdriver. Now that the easiest part is done, let's knock out the rest of these brakes. Before you put the brake shoe back on the parking brake lever, we need to find out where the lever attaches. So grab the parking lever and put it in the exact place it will rest when everything is back together. Now grab the brake shoe and line it up. This should give you a clear indication which hole the pin goes through. Now grab your new pivot washer and push it into place. Thank you. 
If you're having trouble, you can use a hammer or something else and hit it a few times to get it to seat. Once the pivot washer is in place, use a pair of pliers to clamp together the ends of the washer to ensure it will not come loose. Now we can add the anises to the shoe contact surfaces. If you would have added it earlier, you would have anises everywhere right now. This stuff is very difficult to remove from just about anything. Clothes, skin, anything. But this should help reduce brake squeal, so don't skip this step. As you can see, all six surfaces have been covered. Now here comes the fun part. I decided not to cut any part of this clip so you can see what a rookie looks like trying to put this together. A ton of videos I have watched show you how it's done on the first try and they make it look very simple. Well, it's not. You may get lucky and get it on the first, second, or 11th try. If you do, and this is your first time you have worked on drum brakes, congrats. That's pretty impressive. I, on the other hand, did not have that kind of luck. I'm going to put a timestamp at the top right of the screen if you want to skip ahead. Otherwise, enjoy my frustration. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, here we are. I just got the spring in place. This took me about five minutes too long. Hopefully you have better luck. Now move on to the other side and do the exact same thing. This clip, I'll walk you through it. Essentially all you're doing is putting the pin in through the back and through the brake shoe. Grabbing the plate and spring with your pliers and then trying to spin the plate around the pin in order to secure it in place. And that is exactly how it should look. The pin is horizontal, so I made sure the plate matched the pin. Then I pushed in to compress the spring, which pushed the pin past the end of the plate. All I needed to do at that point was turn the plate and I was done. Again, this is a lot easier if you have done it before. Now that both shoes are attached, it's time to start piecing everything else together. Let's start with the parking brake strut, also known as the parking brake link. The parking brake strut should have one spring on the end and then that one piece I told you to save earlier in this video. That little piece is what keeps this spring in place even while the parking brake strut moves. Once that's done, mount the strut between the two brake shoes. That piece may move from time to time as you're putting the rest of the brakes together, so just remember to check it at the end to make sure it's still properly aligned. Okay, stop. I took these two parts out of my wheel cylinder earlier and forgot to put them back in. So make sure you have these attached so you don't have to rip everything apart again. Putting this back together was rather difficult. I wasn't sure which part should go on first and the springs kept fighting me until the end. I won't cut any part of these clips. This way you get the full understanding of how much I was struggling. I will put another timestamp at the top right of the screen for those of you that want to skip ahead.
So here's a rundown of what order to install these pieces. First you want to put your cable guide into the shoe, followed by the shoe return spring. Do not connect the spring to the anchor pin yet. Grab the shoe guide plate and put it over the anchor pin. Next, put the circular end of the adjusting cable around the anchor pin. Then feed the cable around the cable guide, leaving the hook end at the bottom. Now you want to get that return spring over the anchor pin. I found using a wrench like this one worked best. Once that's on, you can attach the other return spring. Here I will show you exactly how a wrench can be used to get that spring in place. With the circular end of the wrench facing up like this, place the spring around the shaft of the wrench. Then put the open end of the wrench around the anchor pin and drive the spring over the wrench by moving the wrench to the right. You may also have to twist the wrench to release it from the spring's grip. The spring should fall right into place. This is a lot easier to use than some of the special tools made specifically for drum brakes. Hey, remember when I said don't forget those two parts of the wheel cylinder? Yep. I forgot. So, unfortunately, I had to take everything apart and go through this whole fiasco again. So don't be like me. Remember those pieces. And don't forget about the pictures you took before you started taking everything apart. You can always refer back to them. Let's move on to the bottom. I started with the adjuster assembly and for some reason decided to completely unscrew it. I don't have a clue why, but that's what I did. I will adjust it back in a bit. Once that's in place, you will get your adjuster lever on. This is pretty simple. You need to place this hook into that hole in the shoe. The other end just rests on the adjuster shoe. Now take the hook end of the cable and the adjuster spring and attach them both to the opening at the top of the lever. The spring should face the opposite way of the cable hook. Your next goal should be to get that spring into the hole in the brake shoe. Since I unscrewed the adjuster assembly too much, I started having trouble getting the spring to reach the hole. So little by little I adjusted the length of the adjuster assembly.
The hook at the end of the spring needs to be pushed into the hole. I just use a pair of pliers, but a flathead screwdriver would work also. I like using the pliers because I can grip the end of the spring and prevent it from moving. Using anything else, I would imagine the spring would move around a little bit too much. Now this is how it should look. So put some anesthesia on the surface to prevent the drum from sticking and then put the drum back on. You should feel a little bit of a resistance between the shoes and the drum. If the drum can't clear the shoes, then you need to adjust the adjuster assembly by turning the screw to pull the shoes in closer. When I placed the drum on, I felt zero resistance between the drum and the shoes. So that means I need to move the screw like this to push the shoes farther away from the center. I did this a few times until I felt like there was a little bit of resistance. Now, if you change your wheel cylinder, then do not forget to bleed your brakes. If you didn't replace your wheel cylinder, you should be good to go. All you need to do is drive your vehicle forward and back, slamming on the brakes in order to adjust them because they are self-adjusting. If for some reason your brakes feel weird, whether it's the brake pedal or the e-brake, you can always adjust the brakes even after you put everything back together. Just remove the dust cover and use a flathead screwdriver to move the screw for the adjuster assembly. That's all there is to it. If you found any part of this video helpful or entertaining, please give it a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that button as well as the notification bell so you don't miss a video from our channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.